So in this video, we are going to render a uh, batch render using the Maya software rendering uh, software. So we're not going to put any lights or anything in here. What I will do is uh, I'm just going to put a plane underneath the spaceship here. So create objects and let's go with a plane. Now let's drag something in there just for the time being. Um, again, let's double check, make sure we've got um, something in here, but we can save um, an actual camera view for this. So let's go ahead and make a new camera to render from. I think that's going to be uh, really important. So let's go up here to create uh, camera and camera, and we're going to call this cam render, and I'll go a one. And I want to look through that camera to see what it looks like. So I'll go up here to Panels, Perspective, and then find that new name right here. So Cam Render 1. That puts us in the camera, which it is sitting on the ground, probably at the 0, 0 axis. So I'll move around. Yep, there we go. And what we want to do now that we've got this camera, and you can see here that we're looking through it, it's got the, the new camera name down here, is we want to set up the resolution. Um, so this batch render, this is how you would render out um, most of your animation work. Um, when you render it out with all the lighting and everything in there. Um, and then it will render it out as separate images. So it'll put out, in this case, we've got 300 frames across this timeline. And so it's going to render 300 images and it'll put them in order with numbers per frame. And then we'll bring them together in a compositing program. We'll use After Effects um, later on and then render them out from there as a movie file. So uh, let's go up here to um, our render settings window first. So we want to make sure we're using Maya software for this. So it says render using use the Maya software. In the common tab, let's go ahead and f set this up for uh, sequence rendering or for batch rendering. So we're going to give this file a name. I'll just call it Spaceship and um, let's go Animation. <laughs> and then um, for the image format, let's just choose something that, that makes sense. A JPEG would be fine for what we're doing here. Um, frame and Animation Extension. Notice we've got it tells you what it is for single frame rendering. Let's drop that down. We want the one that is called name.number.extension. You normally you want the extension at the end. Um, and then the number will help it keep it all in order. So we'll type name number extension. Um, frame padding of four. And that means that if we have 300 frames, that means there's three digits in the number. And by giving a frame padding of four means it's going to add an extra digit, a fourth digit, to every number in the sequence. So that way 300 will be 0, 3, 0, 0 instead of just 3, 0, 0. Uh, frame 1 will be 0, 0, 0, 1. That way they stay in order. So if we were going into the thousands, we would want to put a frame padding of 5, but we can leave that at 4 here. Now we want to tell it what frame to start on. So we'll start on frame 1, and we're going to end on frame 300. And by frame, just keep that at 1. We're going to tell it to render out of the new camera that we created. So cam render 1. I don't need an alpha channel, so I'll just uncheck that. And then we want to select the size that we need. So let's go with the same one we had before, which was the, five, uh, the 854 by 480. And 72 would be fine. And since we don't have lights in here, let's just keep the render options with the enable default light for now. And then let's go into Maya software. And I'm just going to bump up the render quality a little bit. We'll go to production quality here. And since I'm not using any shadows or anything, we don't need ray tracing. So I'll leave that unchecked. Um, so we have a specific resolution that our renders are going to um, be. So let's 
set up a render frame so we can see exactly how that's going to frame our animation. So we've got the camera selected. Let's go up to View, Camera Settings, and go down and select Resolution Gate. That just looks at what the resolution you set up in the render settings and puts a frame around that so you can see exactly how it's going to frame your your animation. So I'm going to move this down a little bit and just scrub the timeline to make sure that the spaceship doesn't fly off and it does a little bit. That might work. Pretty close. And it drops right down there. So alright, so if you like exactly where you've got that camera, you can go ahead and lock that in. So go back over to the channel box and where it says channel uh you know, make sure you have that camera selected. We can left click and drag through these names, then right click on them and go down to lock selected. And that way you know that camera is gonna remain there. You don't accidentally move it or something like that. So this would be a good time to save your uh, scene before you render. And the last thing that we want to do is um, get the render going. So we'll go up here to, uh, you're probably on the modeling menu right now. So go over here and drop this list down to select the rendering menu. And then look for render on the main menu and go down to batch render. And you can hit the option box for this if you want. Now it says use all available processors. Yeah, I would leave that. Um, and you can do batch render and close. Before we click that though, let's let's go down here. Um, at the very bottom you should see the output line here and a little box. It's a button. Go ahead and click on that. This is your script editor. And what's nice about this is if you expand this, and I'm going to move the middle of it down, it's going to tell you um, an update, a real-time update, as to what frame you are on in the batch render. So you can keep a, a running tab. This is really you know, nice to have when you have a, a render that's going to take you know, multiple hours or maybe even days to get through. So let's go ahead and hit batch render and close. Hold on here. Okay, so I got mine working. I just hit, hit batch render, and you'll see here in this window that it is, um, should say rendering with Maya software. And in just a second, you should see uh, the renders start to, there we go. And as they're going through, you can count the numbers over here. It tells you what frame it is. Over here, it tells you the percentage of each frame and how much it's complete. Um, since we don't have any lights or anything in here, this is rendering very quickly. So you can see here that we're on 95, 99, now that we're in the hundreds. And we're going a total of 300 frames. If you need to um, cancel it, you know, say it's taking too long and you got to use your computer for something else, you can always go back up to render and you'll find a cancel batch render option right there and that'll stop it. Make sure when you do that you um, jot down whatever the last frame it completed was, the frame number, and then when you get back you can type in that frame as your starting frame uh, to continue the rendering later on. Alright, so it looks like it's done. It says it's rendered completed and it shows here that it went 300 times, uh, 300 images. Alright, so let's take a look at um, where those are. Okay, and you can see um, in mine here, it's, it'll tell you what the file name is. And we didn't set up, if we go back up here to the render settings, uh, under common tab, uh, you can see here that at the very top you'll have path and it says C drive, users, and then my name because I'm the user for this computer. Under documents, Maya projects, default images, that's the default location for any renders that um, you're rendering when, you, rendering when you don't have a project set up. So um, if you have a project set up, it will render all of your images into that images folder of the project. But in this case, I didn't have a project set up, so it sends it to the user and then your name, 
the documents Maya projects default images. So um, again, if you if you go over here to um, um, go over to to file and then go down to project window, you can create a new project and um, wherever that's located, that's where your files will go. Um, it's important actually for you to know this because um, if you don't, you'll you'll wonder what happened to all the renders and you may find a, a file at some time that has a whole bunch of images sitting in there from a long time ago. So so this is where you go to find it. And this here on the uh, script editor, it also obviously tells you what the path name is. So I'll just go ahead and do mine real quick here and go to users. And I'm on a PC, by the way, so um, a Mac might, the, the default location of a Mac might be a little bit different than uh, what mine is. All right, and here are all the images. So you can see image one. Now scroll all the way down and all the way down to, let me get it here, 300. So I may just create a folder in here and call it the Maya render. And I'm going to drag all 300 of these images into that folder. And that'll make it easier later when we do um, the compositing. All right, so that's it for rendering this through uh, the Maya software render. Um, the next video I'm going to do the same thing, only using Arnold, which is slightly different.